Come make it. Yeah. Hey, eight the point. Eight from the cater, man. Hey, Chubb, Teddy. Yeah. Just think about Garbo. Yeah. I'll bet he's got his ribs right now. <laughs> yeah, and wondering why two of them are missing. Ha! <laughs> Teddy really put him away, didn't he? Come on, baby. You know it. The way that other guy looked when he left the ring, his own mother wouldn't recognize him. That's it, Lou. Your champ looks prettier than ever. Thanks, Doc. Come on. Come on, work for Daddy, huh? That's the Come way. On. They won't roll. That's what you get for breathing on them. What do you mean? You are taking breath enough to melt them. Ah! Hey, there's a seven. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we got you that time. Oh, yeah? <laughs> you just hang on a minute. I'll show you something. What are you doing, Teddy? What'd you declare at the way in, Lewitsky? 200, 350, 4, 5, 200, 300. No, I'm saying pretty good over here. 350, 400, 5, 6, 7, $800. You're playing for chicken feed down there, Klaus. You know the boss has got 800. You must be a little bit punch drunk. Now, don't get wise, Teddy. I earned all that. I've been organizing fights for you for eight months. You pump of garbage. You think I'm some kind of dummy or something? This outfit was worth $35 before the fight, you remember? Now he had 300 coming for a 12-round goal with Joe Garbo. That's a yard and a half for you and a yard and a half for me. That's $800 here, you lying, cheating. Now, if somebody knows how to make money grow on trees, I wish the miracle worker would have told me about it. I'm getting out of here. Hold it, boy. Now, Teddy, you're a smart kid. You even been to college. Now, you know as well as I do, a manager's got to have some reserve capital on hand. There's big wheels, need greasing. There's emergencies. You understand? You've been getting a free ride on my back for eight months, man, while I've been sweating. Well, I'm going down the road. And I'm taking my money with me. Kid, stop right there. Now you can go, but my money stays here. Now give it to me. You'll kill me, you'll kill me, don't. You'll pay for this, Teddy. I swear you'll pay. Another man on the highway with a broken car, no money for a taxi, and he gives that man a ride to the city. He's going to make the kingdom of heaven. Oh, yeah? That's right. Well, I guess I'm going to have to miss the kingdom of heaven. I got my own troubles, pal. How much I owe you? Seven bucks. See you around anyway.
Hell, I don't know. Ah. Uh, give me a cheeseburger rare with everything on it. And draw one. What was it? Another girl or something? Yeah, I mean, I can't be sure, but you know that way she moves? Well, well, you know what I mean. Oh, you know it. That's it. They try to act. Hey, partner. Hey, waiter. Uh, hold it, will you, sec? Not like they're I'd like to have a cheeseburger yeah. rare and... Just a minute. Everything okay? A little more coffee? Yeah. Hey, you know, I think you're right. There's this girlfriend of mine, and whenever we go in there, like to the dance or something, she just sits there. And nobody ever pays no attention to her. But nothing seems to bother her, though. I mean, maybe she knows she's different, and that's why I don't bother her. Hey, are you listening to me or not? I'm making a swimming pool for you. Get you! Hey, Mike! <laughs> it's you. Yeah, it's me. Do you remember me? Yes, I remember you. Been a long time since college, huh? Looking good, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen you, boy. Yeah. What are you doing in a place like this? I live here. Oh, yeah? Oh, I got a good job. Yeah. Oh, let's go eat at my place. Don't eat this garbage. Come on. Be my pleasure. Clean that up, you slob. What would you like? Steak, chicken, hamburger, pork. You got enough uh, money for uh, one of those beauties? I'm rich now. Let me see. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's one. lovely. Two. Yes, I like Can you that. Three? Well. Yes, three. And a chicken, too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take it all. Yeah, what did you do when you got out of jail? Well, then they put me in another jail. They called it Vietnam. For long? No, I got lucky. I was only there three or four months, and I caught a bullet in the leg, and they sent me home. In the past six months or so, I've been back fighting again. <laughs> yeah, it's written There's all over your face. A whole lot of places that was some big slob in Arizona. It was a middleweight, and they snuck him in on me with some crooked scales. So I beat him anyway. Oh, oh, yeah. What are your plans now? Hang around, keep doing what I'm doing, I guess. Uh -huh. Why don't you stay here for a couple of weeks? With me. Huh? Be my guest. Terrific. Not bad for a newspaper man, huh? Sports writer? A oh, little of everything. I'm an assistant editor. Like you said, you got a good job. Yeah, it pays well enough. Hey, why don't you call Susie? Why don't you call Susie? Oh, what do you want? A girl to kiss you? Oh, well, um, um, I think you better tell her to call Susie. Call Susie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hey, Teddy, come on in. The water's fine. I'm out of shape. You'll have to pull me off the bottom. Why don't you relax? You look so restless. Hey, if I relax anymore, I'm going to go bananas. <coughs> hey, 
Hey, Teddy, what's eating you? Mike, you're a good friend. But I can't keep sponging off you forever. I gotta do something. I gotta get a job. I gotta make some money. You need some money, hmm? You know, I think I know somebody who could take care of you. This guy is so straight. He doesn't even care about the money, only about his boys. And he picks them himself. But there's one thing you should know. He expects them to toe the line, and if they don't, they're out. There's no second chance. Hi, Nick. Hi, Mike. Hey, Nick. This is Teddy, the kid I was telling you about. Hi, Teddy. Hi. So you are the one who walks out on managers, huh? Come over. Take off your glasses. What's that? Ah, three or four years old. Okay. You know, boxing isn't the only good rope racket. Ask Mike if he's ever heard of an honest game. Never. Ha. You know where my daughter learned to smoke marijuana? In the boarding school. Yeah. Now listen to this guy. You know, Nick was born in Sullivan's bucket and cradled in Gene Tunney's gloves. He's okay. <laughs> I got a hell of a lot of boys that titles in the old days. If you got what it takes, like Mike says you do, and you listen to me, we can go places. We can go. How much you weigh, you know? Kearney! Kearney! Box with him. Keep on him, Kearney. Keep on him. That's it. Move in. Come on. Take him. Take him. Use your left, your left. That's it. Keep on him. Keep on him. Don't let him back up on you. That's the way. Watch it. Stay on him. Stay on him. Come on. Come on. Watch him, Curly. Come on. Fuck. Watch him. Come on. Come on. Stay lie on your feet. That's it. Jab, jab. Good. Keep it up. That's the way. That's the way. You know, Teddy, we'll make boxing what it used to be. But today's kids don't even know. Okay, okay, that's enough. That's enough. You were lucky to find me. I'm old-fashioned. You know, but I care for my boys. Because every punch they get, it hurts me too. You know. a nice looking chick you got, boss. <laughs> it's my daughter. She only shows up to spoil my digestion. Come on. Cherok is a good name, kid. And a good name's important. Especially for the big time gamblers. It spells luck. Maybe the gentleman would like to invest some capital on tomorrow's fight, yeah? 
Jenks a man of his word. No problems, no taxes. Cherokee or Murphy? Black market betting? Look, you don't make any real money working for somebody else, pal. What's the maximum? No limit. The big money says Cherokee. But I like Murphy. What do you say? I never bet. It's pretty hard to win that way. That's where you're wrong. I always win. How'd you get in here? Through the gate. Well, turn around and go on out through the gate. You left me without a cent. I need some dough. I've got some information might like to have. Oh, come on now. You're the champ. You can spare a hundred bucks. How about fifty? Do yourself a favor. Turn around and go on down the road. Or I squash that rotten soul of yours. All right, champ. That's too bad, Teddy. There might come a time when you'll need a good friend. You know, all this publicity's giving you a swelled head. But I'll tell you, the game you're in now is worse than the one I'm in. And more dangerous. You got no idea what can happen. Ah, take a walk. you were talking to. Oh, never mind. Go into town. No, wait a minute. I know that guy from someplace. Mind your own business, Teddy. Understand me? Remember, Teddy, he fakes for the head, then comes in for the body. He's a body puncher, so don't let him in close. Just back away. Don't try to slug it out with him. Uh -huh. Make him come to okay, you. Give me a shot. Tire him out. That's oh, it. You understand? That's it. How's it feel? Okay, kid? Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, he fakes with the left hand, then follows it up, you know? Yeah. Now, don't go in close for the first couple of rounds, all right? You size him up. Size him up, okay? Study him a bit. Take, you know? take it easy, will you? I'm okay. Put more tape there. Stay loose, Teddy. It's time, kid. All right. Go on ahead. Yeah? Good boy had better lose. What are you talking about? You heard me. The kid loses. Uh, but... You're a dead
in just a moment, it'll be that new boy, Cherokee Teddy Wilcox, going against Joe Lewis, beginning into the uh, fourth round. Joe Lewis Murphy, the number one contender for the middleweight crown. Ten o'clock. I can't believe it. What are we supposed to do? It hasn't ended yet. Another jab to the uh, right, to the forehead by Wilcox. Murphy comes back. He's a great body puncher. A flurry of right sand left to the midsection.
volunteer. You won. That's what counts. Hey, that's right. I forgot all about that. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Yeah? Give me that. It's for you. Teddy, it's Nick. I'll talk to him. This is Teddy. Teddy, I know what you're thinking. Look, son, you gotta listen to me. Don't give me any father and son stuff. Teddy, boxing's been my life. Yeah, boxing is terrific! Wait a minute, wait a minute, you young pug. What do you think? That, that I didn't look for a way out? There was nothing to do, you understand me? Nothing I could do for either of us. Teddy, I must see you. If I see you, I'll kill you. I have to see you. What for? To explain. What about your money? I don't want any money. Teddy, it would cost me my life. Okay. Where at? Harley Street, number 14. My daughter's place. Make it as quick as you can. And don't tell anyone you're coming. Hey, Nick. Teddy, you finally... Teddy, look out! Team car 14, see the woman. 227 Walker Place, unknown trouble. Car 2, car 2, possible homicide, 14 Harley Street, handle code 3. Okay, let's Repeat. go. Possible homicide. One four Harley Street. Suspect there now.
You look awful. What happened to you? I saw Nick. Well, what did you do? I didn't do nothing, and he didn't say nothing. He was dead. Mike? Get rid of that chick. What? Dead, man. Didn't you hear me? Here. Somebody beat Are you sure it wasn't you? Nope. Anybody see you? Yeah, girl. Did she recognize you? I recognized her. Oh, man. It was his daughter. If she blows and a whistle, I'm dead. All I know is I was coming in through the backyard and some guy bumped into me. I can't hear you. All I know is I was coming in through the backyard and some guy bumped into me. Kind of dark coming in that back way, isn't it? Any reason why you couldn't use the front door? I heard the siren. I like to stay clear when the cops are around. Uh-huh. Do you think you can recognize this guy who bumped into you? It was pretty dark. Maybe. Excuse me for asking, but were you very close to your father? No. Did he come to visit you very much? Hardly ever. We didn't seem to understand each other. I've been living alone for at least a year and a half. What? Mm. Just checking. Just checking. It's about time you learn to understand, too. You're right, miss. You're absolutely right. Well? Nothing else, Captain. Except the station reported that that fighter, Teddy Wilcox, mm -hmm. swore he'd kill Nick LaCantrina the next time they met. Mm. And Wilcox has got a record as long as a freight train. Looks like the young man kept his word. That's my alibi. Matter of fact, I ain't got nothing else to say. That's it. Teddy wants to avoid any trouble for you, Captain. We were up all night together celebrating his victory. Be careful about sticking your neck out too far for a friend, Mike. I've got an entire stadium ready to swear he was going to kill his manager. Besides, his file here reads like a uh, cheap novel. He's been booked on all kinds of charges. Fighting, violence. Look at this, almost killing a university professor. Wait a minute. He happened to be raping my girl at the time. That's not what she said at the trial. Uh, see if it says anything about him being decorated in Vietnam. Yeah, well, we got on. that too. Here, this will interest you. He was decorated for killing 13 men. Yeah, well, they paid me to do it. You taxpayers. Are you still convinced, Mike? If you've got a Bible, I'm ready to swear to it. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud. Haven't they got anybody else? Have you got anybody else for lineup? Never mind. Come on, Sergeant. Get in there. All right, Jeff. Get in there, me. will you? Take off your coat and open up your tie. Make yourself look like something there. Come on, go in and get it, will you? That's it. Will you take his gun? Now, you men just stand still and keep your mouths shut. Okay, let her in. The captain. Okay, miss. Take your time and make sure of your identification. Recognize him? I think so. Point him out. That one. The last one. All right, get him out of here.
Just a minute, young lady. This whole thing will be played again in court. And after you've been tried for perjury, you'll be a little older and I hope a little wiser. This isn't fun, you know. But the only one that's getting a laugh out of this is your father's murderer. Go ahead. Get out of here. Good night, Good night. You know that little girl recognized me. Really? Take me to my office. Boy, that alibi ain't gonna hold up for long. If Nick's little girl decides to blow the whistle, I'm gonna be up creek. I gotta find out who killed Nick. Don't get into any more trouble. The police don't have any evidence. Things will calm down in a few days. They'll have to write killed by unknown person in Nick's file. You're in this thing up to your... If I don't find out who killed Nick, you're gonna beat it up to your ears. Who are you? What do you want? I'm somebody who wants you to be relaxed. I won't do you any harm. By the way, did you paint this? Yeah. Hmm, it's far out. What is it, the spirit of your father or something? Hey! Relax. No one will do you any harm. One thing I want to know about your father. What's his body you? Yes? Do you know if he had a... a little notebook bound in blue leather? I don't know. Who told you? Yes. Stick it here, like that. That, 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 that tells me everything. Hmm. Do you know who killed him? Maybe. One thing is sure. They killed him. He's dead, all right. But why? Oh, poor thing. I'm sorry, but he was a very stupid man. And what is worse, he thought he was clever. Why have you come to see me? To decide. Decide what? You're an orphan, right? I want to decide if you will be and alive or dead or. And by the way, don't tell anybody I was here. You've never seen me. It's much better. Whiskey? I told you you'd need me again. All right, all right. I know it was a fix. Were you in on the organizing? You're overestimating me, Teddy. That stuff's too big for me. But I know a fix when I see one. That was a good one. That was a real professional job. Who did it? I don't know. Some big guy come in from California, one of the big wheels. One of the guys that don't like being double-crossed. Can you find out who it was? Yeah, I can find out. I got a few friends left, you know. Find out. I'm not going to do it for this kind of chicken feed. Now I want my whole 800 back. All right, here. Here's some of it. Now, how do I get in touch with you? Jeez. All right, I'll get you the rest of it. Where do I get you? Just don't worry about it. When I find out something, I'll look you up. Hi, sir. 
Hey, Mike. Be right with you, Teddy. I'm almost finished. I just saw that creep Lewiski, my old manager. I think he's going to give me a little bit of information. Don't pay any attention to him. He's another vulture trying to take advantage of your situation. Don't kid yourself. That he'll sell his mother for a quarter. Are these my pictures in here? Yes. Look, Teddy, stop looking for trouble, will you? All this business with the police and everything, just, just forget about it. You have everything going for you, Teddy. You got an ironclad alibi. Yeah, for how long? For as long as you don't do anything stupid. There ain't nothing stupid about trying to find out who knocked off Nick. And about who's putting a frame on me. You know, Mike, hmm. see those guys that were in the corner, the ones shooting pictures, they saw who Nick was talking to. You know them? I don't know them, but the newspaper people, you must know them. You all right? Get out, Teddy! What's up? That bullet was meant for me, you know? Not only the cops are looking for him, but somebody else now. You better get out of town and forget the whole thing. I'd be admitting to something I didn't have nothing to do with. It's better to run out than be an innocent corpse. Hey, wait a minute. They're shooting at me. And that means that they're scared. They're scared because they think I'm going to find out something. Listen, all you got to do is take me to see those guys that got the film. There might be one little word on that tape. Listen. One little picture. Listen. What? Listen. It's impossible tonight. See? Tomorrow morning. Okay. Can't seem to coordinate. Eight, nine. He's up. And this fight is... She got the announcer and I can't hear nothing. How was I supposed to know? I wasn't there to record private conversations. Of course you weren't. Nobody said it was your fault. I'm, uh, sorry. I didn't mean to yell at you. It's just that, uh, it's another dead end. How would you know? Are you an expert? Alan, here's a wizard with sound. He can work miracles if he wants to. Really. Did you have any other mics placed? Yeah, but they were further away. I don't know. We could listen to the stuff that we've thrown out. Maybe and oh, all that stuff down at yeah. the... Yeah, it's already down in warehouses and sacks, ready to be dumped. Yeah, it's probably mixed in with that other stuff, too. Well, uh... Do you think you can sort it out? I can try. Well, I'd appreciate it. Whatever you can do, okay? How much time do you need? Well, it entails a lot, Mike. If we're lucky, we might be able to get it together by tomorrow night. That's a long time to wait. Um... Maybe for late tonight, then. All right. Well, are you sure we won't get into any kind of trouble, Mike? Oh, you should know me by now. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for the big favor. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, I thought we parked the car here. What's going on? I don't know. Maybe they had to move it or something. Hey, man, I parked my car here. Where is it? They came and took it away. The what do you mean, them? they? Who's they? They much either. One of them just got in and drove off. What are you talking about? I leave my car here and you let somebody come and take it? Look, a badge is a badge. Your name Teddy Wilcox? Yeah. How about coming with me? Uh, Captain Perkins wants to uh, have a little talk with you. He's lonely. Hey, wait a minute. You can't do you that. You Mike Durrell, a sports writer? Yeah. Well, I guess it's my lucky day. Captain Perkins wants to see you, too. Okay, let's go. I can't swear that this gentleman was driving. 
But I'm sure the car was a 1953 Ford ranch wagon. It's all down in my statement. What time this happened, Colonel? 1.39 a.m. I suffer from insomnia. The car was coming down Harley Street. It came around the corner fast and hit poor Tordy. I'm very precise in everything. I'm sure I'm not mistaken. I think we'll be able to use you after all, Colonel. I beg your pardon? I say we'll be using you after all, Colonel. Whenever you wish. Gentlemen. Right this way, Colonel. Thank you. Kind of tough luck, champ. That old guy can't even see good. My word's as good as his. We've got conclusive evidence. We found the hair of the colonel's dog on his car. You guys don't miss a thing. Practically nothing, Mike. Practically nothing. And now your buddy's got you into a real jam. False testimony and an accomplice to murder. Mike don't know nothing about nothing. Things don't look so good for you either, champ. Matter of fact, they look worse than you think. Come on. It's going to be kind of hard to recognize him. His name was Paul Lewinsky. That kind of beating requires a fine hand. The same kind of beating that was administered to Mr. Nick LaCaterina. You did know him, didn't you? He's my manager. What'd you say? <clears throat> I said he's my manager. Once. That's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I thought. You know, I'm beginning to think that being your manager isn't very lucky. Hey, now listen to me, oh, Captain. Wait a minute. Hey, hold it, you. Oh. Get after him. Go on. great faith in you, Captain Perkins. For example, I'm sure you'll be able to find out who fired these three shots at me. When did it happen? Last night at my place. I don't know if they were meant for me or Teddy. Why didn't you call us right away? Because, Teddy, he didn't want to involve the police. I give you my word. The person you should be looking for is whoever shot at me. You know, right now, I don't believe you. Now, let's stop the fooling around, huh? You tell us where your friend is, huh? My name is Mike Durrell, and I am a writer. I won't talk without my lawyer. Mr. Durrell, Wilcox can't get out of town. So I got all the time in the world to catch him. But if you want to stay out of jail, it would be to your advantage to help me. Hmm? 
You know it's my right not to answer if I don't want to, Captain Perkins. Hi. What are you doing here? Well, uh, to tell you the truth, I came here for help. You came to the wrong place. Well, see, the cops are looking for me. And everybody else is looking for me, too. Must be pretty lonely living around here now. Why don't you wash that off? It keeps me company. He wasn't much as a man. But he was still my father. And you had to kill him. I didn't kill your father. You know I didn't kill your father. How come you didn't tell the police? I don't fool around with the police. It's a personal debt I have with my father. I still owe him something. Me too. Because he was all I had. When I met him, I couldn't fight. But he made a hell of a fighter out of me. Almost a champ. Only now he's gone. And there ain't a thing we can do about that, but we gotta go on. I know what it feels like not to have anybody. I know just how it feels. And you get hard inside. And you get tough. Yeah. You're a tough guy too, aren't you? Just like me. Only not so tough. And it hurts inside. If you help me, we can't bring him back. There ain't nothing we can do about that. But maybe we can find his murderer. Maybe. How can I help you if I can't even help myself? No, wait a minute now. Maybe we could, we could make it right with him. We could at least find out who did it. If you stay with me. That guy, I sure remember him. I saw him around all night long. Who could he be? At least you found something. Have you been all through the tapes? Almost, but I'm afraid there's not much there to interest Mr. Wilcox. Hmm, there he is now. Oh! Come on, Mike. I need to talk to you in, in private. Listen, we got a problem. What are you doing in here? You paid his bill, now get out. Listen, Captain, paid my it. client has been paid manhandled. It. Come on, Durrell, let's go. Oh, Mr. Durrell. It might just interest you to know that we just found two more bodies. And just by coincidence. These people had been working on some fight film of your buddies. It's okay. It's yes, okay. sir, Mr. Durrell. You've sure been a big help to us. If we don't stop Wilcox pretty soon, he'll turn this city into a cemetery. But I... That's all right. You got a problem, all right, Captain. But it hasn't got anything to do with my client. Beat it. Beat it. Come on, Mr. Durrell. Captain? Have somebody follow him. Shadow him all the time. Come on, come on, move it! Teddy. Teddy, why did my father have to die? Please don't. 
died for nothing. There's some kind of big organization behind this, but I can't figure it out. Every time I get to somebody, they're dead for nothing. And I'm sick of it. But it isn't your fault. I know, but that don't make any difference. Dead's dead and it don't come back again. I think the best thing for me to do is just go on down the road and blow town. If you leave town, you'll run for the rest of your life. And you'll be sitting on death row before you know it. You can't give up, Teddy. Remember the deal we made at my home. Please wait. Teddy, I just called Templar. He's waiting for us. Okay. Let's get to the bottom of it. anything yet. He can't hear you. He must read your lips. Hey, wait a minute. You see that guy? That's the guy from the gas station. Do you know him? Yeah, I know him. I saw him outside of town. He had some phony hippie clothes on. He came to my place. What? Hmm. Yes, he was looking for my father's notebook. And he knew well what he was doing. Why didn't you tell me? I wasn't sure about you. I wanted to stay away from the whole matter. Uh, can you tell me what that guy was saying to Nick? The one dressed as a hippie said, I balance the accounts. There may be some broken gears in the cash register. The firm sent me to fix the machinery. I did what Chink told me to do. I only follow orders. Say that again. I did what Chink told me to. I only follow orders. What does that mean to you? Jane. He was always around the gym a lot. My father said he used to be a professional wrestler. I saw them together several times, but I don't know what business they could have had. Calling the police. No. No cops. Now, there's something you can do. Go find Mike and bring him here. Tell him I got three shots in this thing, and when they're gone, I'll be in there punching. Are you worried? You ain't got to worry about me. Get going. Daddy? 
Yeah. You're Chink, ain't you? You and me got to have a little talk, Chink. About a telephone call somebody made to Nick. Just be... Ah! of all of it, and it stops right here. I've been pushed and shoved and beat up, and no more. Now, I know you killed Nick, I know you killed the whiskey, and I know you killed him, too, but I also know you're too dumb to run this store yourself. Now, tell me who you're working for, or I'm going to kill you slow. I'm telling you one more time. You tell me who the boss is, tell me where I can find that phony that's masquerading as a hippie, or I'm going to blow you in half. Slow. You leave me no choice. Ah! Mike, my main man. Come and join the party. What's going on? Who is he? This is my friend Chink. He's a present for that fat slob Perkins. He didn't talk yet, but it looks to me like he's just about ready to spin us a pretty fairy tale. Aren't you, you fat pig? There is still time to get out of all this, Teddy. What's the matter? Are you scared? No, but you know, I, I'm not a man of action. I don't know. I saw the other day the police station going around there pretty good. <laughs> Mike, just hang on to this now and keep it pointed. Take it easy. Watch my friend here, too. again, right? Yeah, that's right. Only this, I think, is going to be the last time. Remember the guy I was telling you about in the corner of the ring that night? This is him. Only this time, you're going to sing a little different song. You and him are going to tell me why Nick was killed. Okay. Teddy. End of the fairy tale. Let them go. Ah, oh, Mike. Sure. Sure it was you. It was you all the way down the line, wasn't it? You're the only one who knew every move I was making, and you sent that to kill Nick before I could get to him? What for? And Lewinsky? I tried to keep you out. Out of all this, 
I really tried. But when you agreed with Nick to fix the fight, I agreed. I won that fight. You fixed it. Mike, I'm the one who settled the accounts. Shoot him in the head. In the head? Okay. You just lost a friend. You know he had been cheating the organization for two years. He made a lot of money, which means a lot of reasons for killing. Right? But don't worry, you're going to stay alive. Because you're the only one that killed Nick, Lewinsky, and these two right here. You crazy... Crazy? Are you going to tell the police you met the crazy man that settled the accounts? They're going to laugh at you, champ. Be a good boy now, huh? Peace. Hey, you! Hold it! 